Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris, and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we will be diving into the energies of the Pisces new moon on March 9th, 2024. Thank you so much for being together with me today. Before we dive into the astrological energies, I would like to invite you to my upcoming Distant Reiki Share. I host one of these every single new moon, and the next one is on March 9th at 9 a.m. Hawaii time. It's free to join. Everybody's welcome. Whether or not you have Reiki or astrology experience, you are welcome to attend. It's always a sacred circle of soul family coming together and blessing in our new moon intentions with in a sacred space held by Reiki for the highest good of all. And usually I am also sharing about some astrology to some upcoming transits and energies to be aware of. So I hope to see you there. Details can be found at taylornorrisreiki.com. I'm also teaching some classes in March and in April, some Reiki training classes, as well as this Reiki and astrology class on April 20th. It is for the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, co-creating heaven on earth, and it combines galactic astrology with a Reiki journey. I've been teaching a couple classes in this format and this style and they've been really really wonderful and powerful so far with great feedback so if you're interested in really inviting in the higher frequencies of this transit you can learn more about the class at taylornorrisreiki.com all right so here is the astrological chart for the pisces new moon on march Ninth, And you can see that it is a new moon. The moon and the sun are together in the sign of Pisces, ruled by the planet Neptune. It is a new moon, so it's an energy of new beginning, of planting a seed of an intention for the next lunar cycle. And it is our final new moon before eclipse season. So a very potent time to really go within and rest and recharge and receive and deeply connect to your own center because we have a lot of strong astrological energies coming in later on in March and definitely into April, even into May as Jupiter enters Gemini. So I'm really seeing this moment as a time for a spiritual process. This is Pisces. Pisces is a water sign, a mutable water sign. So what do you need to release and let go of? What mystical seeds of intentions do you wish to implant? There may be an emotional release that's occurring. This is a very dreamy and spiritual and mystical and magical new moon, this beautiful Pisces new moon. And this would already be what I was describing, magical, mystical, spiritual, emotional, just any old Pisces new moon. But the new moon is actually sandwiched in between Saturn in Pisces and Neptune, the ruler of this new moon in Pisces. So this is really inviting us to go inward. How are you bringing spiritual energy into matter how are you bringing your dreams into matter, into form? This is the essence of Saturn meeting up with Neptune, slowly inching closer and closer to ultimately Saturn will be conjunct Neptune in February of 2026. And this conjunction is taking place really at the Aries point around zero degrees of Aries. So this could give us a glimpse of that future, of that timeline projecting us forward two years. So this is 
even more confirmation to go ahead and plant a seed of intention or maybe multiple seeds, Pisces, Neptune, infinitely many seeds of intention here. But really the intentions of your pure heart, your pure soul, your pure spirit. And these intentions are ones that can grow over the course of the rest of the lunar cycle, the next 28, 30 days, but they can also grow the next six months until we have our Pisces full moon when the sun is in Virgo. And these are intentions that can we can really see grow over the next two years, preparing for that Saturn-Neptune conjunction in the sign of Aries. So very potent time to definitely go within. Take some time for yourself to just be, connect with nature, connect with the water, be still, be silent, be clear, listen with your whole body, receive, receive the higher consciousness, receive the information you need to receive, the messages, the frequential upgrades. And it was really interesting looking at the chart of this new moon because I was at first I was like, oh, this is so chill. Like this is kind of boring actually. <laughs> like what am I going to talk about? I looked at the galactic charts and I was like, there aren't too many conjunct and opposites. This looks so relaxing. Well, taking another look and our the photo here, the image I've created here gives you a hint that there's more than just the still calm lake reflecting the beautiful starry night sky because there's a lightning bolt that's being reflected here. This is kind of the other energy of this all oh, soft, mystical, still just go within and like pray and receive and have your spiritual practice, your meditation. Well, we also have, you know, this other very powerful energy, Mars and Aquarius square Uranus and Taurus. And this is not to be missed. This is really powerful kundalini activation this is electrical energy uranus and taurus this is innovation this is new ideas this can be felt and experienced you know as a frequential upgrade within the physical body an inspiration a drive a motivation of the male kundalini energy as it's mars and really like having this energy come in and drive you into how do I bring spiritual energy into form? How do I co-create with the invisible world to manifest the forms of the new consciousness, the structures, the foundation, the institutions, the systems, the processes, the matter, the materialism of this new consciousness? This can be all kinds of ideas. This can be all kinds of embodied frequential upgrades as well. So definitely, I would say even before this new moon, if you're watching this video, you know, before the new moon, be very, very, very mindful of your body, be mindful of like where you are in space, you know, like be in your body. If you notice you're checking out, check back in, pay attention and be aware, you know, be mindful, be present, be a little careful, a little cautious. And I don't mean that in a way to evoke fear. I just mean it in a way to be present because this can be more of like an accident prone kind of energy, you know, expect the unexpected kind of energy. So having all of your energy present within your body can help you navigate kind of the surprises, the, the glitches in the matrix, the sudden, the unexpected, the things you weren't really planning for, you know, the things that are outside of your ordinary everyday reality, helping you navigate that with more grace and ease. And, and so that nothing need, you know, awaken you, because this is the principle of Uranus. If there's an accident or something happens, it's in order to wake you up or to give you a message that maybe you weren't otherwise receiving. So definitely be open, be listening, be receiving, and just be mindful of your body. Be mindful of your mind too. 
as Mars is in Aquarius, your mental energy and like your more etheric energy body as well. Ensuring that you're sleeping enough, that you're eating enough, that your self-care is good, that you're drinking good water, that you're moving your body to or not. If you're absolutely exhausted, maybe you're usually a more active person. This is me. Like usually I'm a very active person, like never taking a rest day. And yesterday I was like, I really just need to actually take a rest day. I don't know when the last time I took a rest day. And if if you need that, if that is speaking to you, definitely take a rest day. And if you're someone who's feeling like, actually, I would feel more balanced if I am moving some more, then get out there and do whatever kind of movement lights you up. And you could have some interesting downloads and energetic upgrades and things coming in and this can support your awakening process but really this is helping us move some old stagnant stale energy this could be past life energy because we see mars and aquarius is trying our south node of the moon in libra so this can help move some relational themes some codependency people pleasing this can move some of the mental energy that's been more stuck, more fixed, and again, bring in more of those ideas and innovations and making space for the new consciousness, new paradigm kinds of preferential relationships in a way that is very empowered and grounded, but also on the leading edge here. So Definitely an interesting array of energies. Just be very mindful of your body. And I think going within can allow this electricity to harmonize in a really beautiful and sacred way, doing the practices that bring you into a sense of stillness, into a sense of peace. Because this is this is like the hair dryer into the bathtub, right? We have a lot of air energy and a lot of water energy. So really just making sure that you are in a receptive and open state, but also being mindful if you're feeling like you're too electrical to go and ground. That can be a really balancing energy is to go and ground and be with the earth and be with nature and listen to your body too because you don't have to necessarily go outside and like connect to nature like go to the park or something remember you are nature and your body is nature so connecting to that intelligence and the wisdom of your body is grounding and is you connecting to nature to help harmonize these potent water and air etheric electrical energies here. I'm also noticing mercury here on the Aries point. So this is very powerful. We may be hearing a lot in the news. There's a possibility for a lot of information and downloads. And I'm going to talk about that in a more spiritual way rather than a more mundane global world stage kind of way, because I have some insights and interesting ideas about I received a download about what this is about I think y'all are gonna find this interesting as well all right so this is the Sabian symbol for the new moon at 21 of Pisces under the watchful and kind eye of a Chinese servant a girl fondles a little white lamb Growth in consciousness in its earliest tactile awareness of the wonders of unsophisticated living. And you can pause the video and read this paragraph, but what I'm going to skip to is this last paragraph here. It brings together past and future, an overlapping of levels. The Chinese kindly watching the white girl, the girl fondling the white lamb. There is charm and ingenuousness in the scene. A vision of white hope, a hope for a future that can only be felt almost naively. And I love this image here of the beautiful little girl and the lamb. I couldn't really make one <laughs> with the AI, 
that also incorporated the Chinese servant. It was just getting really weird. So I ended up with this. And it was funny, too. The AI was creating images with the girl. She had lamb's legs. And I was like, no, that's that's not the vibe we're going for. So this is the one that we found. And this just, yeah, this is wonder and awe. This is innocence. This is hope. This is peace. This is communion with the earth, with the animals with this is even like the lamb this is making me think of that mercury in aries as well aries the ram this is also talking about simplicity and simple pleasures and simple enjoyments and maybe it's also offering us a guidance about how to navigate the potency of these intense water energies, these intense electrical and air energies is by coming back to simplicity. How can you simplify your life? How can you streamline your life? Enjoying the simple pleasures of earth human experience and even creating space and holding space for a gentle lovingness and presence for your own animal nature too because humans are part of the animal kingdom as well all the various animals all the plants all the crystals everything upon our earth the mineral kingdom the waterways everything is receiving this massive frequential upgrade as well as our own bodies and being really gentle with ourselves and understanding that we are all receiving this huge influx of cosmic and divine intelligence. And this is a very powerful process that we are in together. And it can be a lot for our animal bodies to hold and receive. So really, really tending to your physicality and treating yourself like you would treat, you would want to treat this little girl or you would want to treat this lamb and really holding them with a lot of tenderness and gentleness and love and grace and compassion. Pisces is a sign of empathy and compassion. So our empathy and our compassion may be extra highlighted this new moon and to make sure you have that compassion for others all of us in this process together as well as having that compassion for yourself and in what ways or areas do you need to possibly manage or set some healthy boundaries around your empathy this is what saturn in pisces is instructing us to do and inviting us to do what kinds of energetic boundaries are needed, participating in any kind of energetic cleansing process that perhaps you're trained in. In my Reiki trainings, I teach Kenyoku. It's a dry bathing. You can also be cleansing in the water. Every week I go to the ocean and it's very intentional to be cleansing my aura and my body and letting go releasing you can also do this in your shower and your bath but to definitely be in that releasing that cleansing that purification process and what is on offer as we engage in that way is this white hope is this innocence this purity this beautiful pure human nature pure animal nature and the nature of pure consciousness as well that we are each a part of Pisces is about the oneness and an embodied remembrance of our oneness. These are the galactic alignments that come from galacticastrochart.com where you can plug in your birth information and for free come up with a chart like this. This is actually a mashup of two different kinds of charts you can make there. This first, this top couple rows here, the sun and the moon, includes the sextile squares and trine aspects. And this chart below here includes the conjunct and opposite aspects for this new moon. So these are the alignments for this new moon. 
and there weren't any conjunct and opposite alignments with the sun and the moon. I also checked this wonderful document by Joyce Van Nispen, who has looked at and tracked the zodiac degrees, plotted the zodiac degrees for each of the galaxies. And I found some that were like kind of close in the neighborhood, but I was really not pulled to talk about any of those necessarily. I searched many other places for star alignments and I was not really finding any that were like really, really close and calling to me. But what we see here in this particular chart is we're receiving help and support from Lyra Ring Nebula. This is a, a portal. This is an ancient portal within the Milky Way galaxy. You can even think of it as the origin of humanoid consciousness within the Milky Way galaxy. And this comes from the channeled work of Lisa Royal Holt, who I really recommend and resonate with her channelings about the galactic history. And so what I was being shown even in my Reiki journey about this new moon was the new moon as a portal to journey through. So we'll be interesting in the Reiki share. I always channel a Reiki journey if, if that's perhaps what we will be doing is journeying through the new moon as a portal. You may even be guided to journey through the Lyra Ring Nebula as a portal this particular new moon. You can see there are some square aspects from Nihal star in Lepus, Bellatrix star in Orion constellation, and Capella star in Auriga constellation. And this is really interesting. I was doing a reading just yesterday where these stars were very prominent for a particular person. And learning more about this Nihal star. So this is Lepus is the rabbit. Ariga is the charioteer that's holding a goat, and Orion is this warrior in the sky. Bellatrix is the feminine warrior energy. Capella is a star of adventure and expansion and exploration connected to the ancient Mayan cultures. Bellatrix is a star where we can really have a lot of success and glory, but it's not a straightforward or immediate kind of success, fame, and glory. It's one where we're really doing a lot of inner work. <laughs> the, any apparent success and glory that comes later, well, there have been years and years of inner work and inner process and intense alchemical process in order to arrive at that level of success and glory. Nihal, the rabbit. This is so awesome. This constellation is actually connected to the Easter bunny and Easter time. So looking at its helical rising and setting, it actually, the way it works in the sky is that it coincides with Easter time. So another very magical star, a subtler star, very, very beautiful, pure consciousness, blue ray star. So what does this mean to have squares to this new moon with all of these energies? Well, we may be invited to do some more of that inner work. We may also receive some of the benefits and manifestations of hey, we've done all this inner work and certain things are clicking into place showing that now we're receiving some of the fruits of that inner work and, and that process of healing and integrating the polarized aspects of self. There may be actions we are taking based on this profound inner work and shadow work that feel more aligned with our own light warrior and spiritual warrior expression that take us into a greater sense of receiving this light, receiving this glory, receiving success. And success, you know, letting go of any kind of preconceived notions about what that means and really inviting in what is your own definition of success. Now we also have the rabbit and the goat. So connecting perhaps to the divine animal kingdom, whether they appear more earthly, whether they may appear as more of the galactic energies. This could be 
ancient memories and frequencies coming through from the Mayan times, Mayan cultures, Atlantean times, Atlantean cultures, Atlantean epochs coming up for healing, for integration, healing and integration of our divine masculine energies. Atlantis epoch was a time where the masculine energy was more highlighted. And we could even have remembrances of the ways that the ancient Mayans were working with time and with nature and with simplicity and living in more indigenous and tribal ways in right relationship with the land. With Nihal, I'm feeling like this is this is more of that frequential upgrade. This is more of that third eye opening, throat chakra opening, inner truth, inner communication. And really, why did you come here? <laughs> that kind of question. What's your next step on your soul and spirit mission? What action are you needing to take that's aligned with that original seed impulse of why you bothered to incarnate as an earth human at this time in the first place? So more of the galactic alignments here with the nodes, they are in a conjunction with Alpharat, Star, and Andromeda. This is the essence of speed. This is the essence of freedom. I just channeled a Reiki journey that was connecting with this star. It was just so beautiful and so free. And here in Andromeda, we have the princess, but we also, with this particular star, we have Pegasus, the winged horse in the sky. So you may notice them as spirit guides within your journey in this life at this point in time in your spiritual practices and your shamanic journeys. They can be powerful spirit guides ushering you into new levels of freedom and speed and movement and the joy and adventure, feeling the the wind in your hair, receiving the cosmic frequencies in a way that lights you up and really helping you break free. Anyways, relationships, codependencies have held you back in the past and coming into more of your sovereignty, Aries. Mercury aligned with Shiat or Skiat star in Pegasus constellation. So Alpha Rats is in the navel of Pegasus or the head of the Princess Andromeda. Shiat is another star within Pegasus constellation. Mercury is also opposite the supergalactic center, inviting us into ancestral healing at this time. This is going to be a big theme. This is a big theme, period. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking about ancestral healing every time I come on Zoom. One way or another, it's always coming up. We are always doing this work. And this work, when it's super galactic center ancestral healing, it's not only your human ancestral lineage, it's also your galactic lineage within the solar system, within the Milky Way galaxy, and most of the time also even beyond the Milky Way galaxy. I'm going to come back to this Mercury in just a moment. Venus opposite Alphard star in Hydra. This is serpent energy. This is Kundalini energy. This is potentially also dragon energy. Jupiter with Almach star in Andromeda opposite a crux. Once again, really connecting with nature, connecting with the fairy kingdom, with the elemental kingdom. And what is going to bring you into that sense of freedom, of fluidity, of divine feminine, and releasing, letting go of any kind of martyrdom, any kind of crisis orientation, or feeling like you have to sacrifice yourself for the highest good of all. Jupiter and Taurus conjunct Almach is like, actually, how about this heaven on earth thing? <laughs> how about you relax and receive? How about you enjoy in your senses a bit more? How about you connect to that peace within and the sacredness of life within the physical world, within the non-physical world, within the elemental world? 
as well and enjoy yourself a little bit more. These are some of the messages of Jupiter. Pluto conjunct Altair and Aquila. Isn't that interesting? Pluto is just scooting along in Aquarius now at one degree, 26 minutes before it's going to station retrograde at two degrees Aquarius and change. So it is nearing its conjunction to Altair and Aquila is the eagle. So this is boldness. This is action. This is clarity. This is direct. This is discernment. This is like whatever bright ideas you've had, this is the time to be taking action on them. It's not tomorrow or the next day. It is right now. And if maybe you don't know what the next the next thing is, be open to receiving what those next steps are. If you're not feeling a directive, then just relax and know that this is more of helping you see a higher perspective. For some, this is like some ideas have been cooking for a while and it's time to take those bold next steps and bold actions. For some, again, it's it might be more passive. It's like, don't be too deeply entrenched in in the group think and the programming and kind of whatever the collective storyline is or consensus reality, even within your life, like taking that higher view, taking that higher perspective, taking that eagle vision view of your life and also what is happening on the world stage as well from that higher perspective. Chiron conjunct Tau Ceti, this is Woo! Diving into that collective unconscious, friends, keeping the dream journal. I know I have not been doing this, but I've been having very powerful dreams. And if you're like, you know, I'm going to just let you off the hook if you're not keeping the dream journal, because this is very much my story <laughs> right now. But know that if you're on it, you're keeping that dream journal, you know, and interpreting and working with your dreams as wonderful. And even if you're not and you you know you're having powerful dreams, just trusting that the work is happening within the dream time because it most certainly is. There's a powerful healing of our deepest unconscious energies. So circling back now to this Mercury at the Aries point around zero degrees of Aries conjunct Skia Pegasus. I'm going to come to you full screen as we talk about Skia. And I've got this book, awesome book by Bernadette Brady, Star and Planet Combinations. And when Skiat is with Mercury, she writes that this is the innovator, gifted with ideas, words, or rhythm, farsighted, to be able to think outside the square. I guess this is a square. To actively seek the truth, a brave new idea, a radical thought. And the example she gives is Nostradamus, an astrologer and physician well-known for his centuries, a collection of prophecies first published in 1555. What's interesting is that this morning, as is often the case, I pulled a card that is perfect for this and perfect for this reading. This comes from the Angel Heart Sigils deck by Stuart Pierce. This is Archangel Gabriel, and you can see the key word here is prophecy. This has been on my mind for a while now, prophecy. What is prophecy? How does it work? What does it mean? What is it for? How do we do it? How do we access it? How do we relate to it in a healthy way? And I received a lot of information about this in a Reiki journey to the third heaven of consciousness and now it feels like the perfect time I was going to do a separate video sharing this but I think right now is is the space to share about this so I'm going to read to you what came through from Reiki about this this Reiki journey to the third heaven of consciousness and this was coming from enlightened Pleiadian and Hyadian star beings. So not necessarily the Pegasus beings, but from these other enlightened beings. But it's about this this topic of prophecy, which I think is very much linked to Mercury, our mind, our ideas, our communications on the Aries point. What's going to happen in the world? 
How do we predict? So hear me out if you feel guided to do so. So I am taken into the Pleiades to commune with the Pleiadians and the Hyadian beings of the light who are giving their blessings of joy and friendship, assistance in the contact process. They are gifting a frequential healing through the turquoise and violet beautiful iridescent lights. They say this is one of enhanced communication, one of enhanced channeling. They say it is expanding the human receptivity to off-planet and interspecies languages and opening us to understand naturally the languages of the many through the universal language of the soul, the spirit, the one consciousness. They say there is a common tongue we all know, and it operates telepathically. It does not rely on the verbal capacity on words and distinctions by human-created word languages. It's a much more efficient system than that. They say we are using it even when we are not aware we are using it, and speak it even when unaware, and most do not understand it even though they all know it. It is once again about remembering. It is once again about removing obstructions to innate capacities and gifts that are built into our very design. They say that work with Reiki, the stars, and planets, and ETs assists with the remembrance of this language. They say right now they are communicating everything this way to me, and it feels completely natural and I am able to immediately translate this language into human words. They say it's about connecting the dots, the very language at the core of interconnectedness. By virtue of our interconnectedness, we are able to communicate with the all that is. They say this universal common language will be more rapidly integrated and remembered with Jupiter and Gemini, beginning in May 2024. They say it will be heightened, our natural telepathy, and interspecies communications, and this remembering will shake existing belief systems. They say this language is the language of prophecy, the all-knowing, the all-one, and the speaking of what one wishes to occur to come into form and manifestation. There is no predetermined personal prophecy for the awakening soul. I repeat, there is no predetermined personal prophecy for the awakening soul. There is only the internally created prophecy exercised outwardly in conscious co-creation with other beings intangible forms and creations and invisible energies. There is much unlearning of prophecies projected upon humanity and a need to actively forget such prophecies. For the real prophecy is of a self-fulfilling nature. Seeing possibilities and seeing multiple timelines and choosing the timeline that feels most aligned is the skill and instruction for the awakening soul. The soul who is falsely separated from their free will is the one who is subject to prophecy. That is why you speak of astrology as you do, and you take great care with your words. Because we are creating reality. It is not happening to us with outside forces exerting control upon us. This is not so. It is all happening for us and through us and with us. The gift of the prophet and the seer and the guide is to illuminate energy patterns and timelines of possibility. The negative interpretations are not helpful. They are limiting and untrue, but can be made true through consent and agreement, and giving away one's power to authority. So it is upon the shoulders of the guides and seers 
to be in contact with higher guidance and enlightened perspectives if they wish to bring about the conversation of a more enlightened world and live in an enlightened society. Eventually, algorithms will change to higher, more positive potentials of experience. Humans need liberation from their addiction to suffering and mental patterns which confine and constrain them within limitation, worry, fret, and fear. Humans need safety, sovereignty, and love, and to be in an echo chamber of this infusion. Give this to yourself as much as you can and be this for others. Trust not anything that is aligned with fear for it is false illusion. Be in the truth, in the trust, in the knowingness that all is love and you are love and you are guided every step of the way on your journey and you guide others with the grace of legions of enlightened beings. For there are many more enlightened beings than there are not. It is once again a remembrance of your true state and true nature as light, light through light, for light, in love, always. This is the message about prophecy that I wish to share, that wish to be shared through me. So take what resonates, leave the rest with this video, with that transmission, with all of this, with all the information you come across. This is very, very important now, more than ever, and will be increasingly important as we move more deeply into 2024. I want to close by sharing the Galactic Heritage card that I pulled for this new moon in Pisces. And very interestingly, it's one that's been coming up a lot. I feel like the cetacean whales have been sharing in just about every one of these updates I've been doing lately. So this is number 90, Shamanic Journey, Cetacean Whale, Parallel Timeline. This comes from Lisa Royal Holt's Galactic Heritage card deck. And really, this could not be a clearer invitation to experience some kind of shamanic journey, to take a Reiki journey this Pisces new moon. I'll be offering one at the Distant Reiki Share March 9th, and also that recording will be available on my YouTube channel if you're unable to attend live. I realize the time and date is not accessible for everybody, but if you'd like to come and receive the journey live and without ads and without you know any kind of interference, well, there could be interference <laughs> Last Reiki journey, there was a literal earthquake in the middle of the journey. This was like a five or six level earthquake. It was very strong here in Hawaii. So I'm not going to say that there will be no interference because we have that Mars square Uranus. Expect the unexpected. There was an earthquake last time. We'll see what happens this time. It's always interesting at the Reiki shares. So Whatever your spiritual practice is, connect to your own inner guidance. Be listening for those messages and that truth by going deeply within and connecting to your own guides. You may be having this come through in the dream time, in your meditations, in your daydreams as well. The creatures of the sea may be feeling particularly accessible may be more accessible as guides, the dolphins, the whales, the Syrian star beings as well. So just be open to what comes through. For more information and to connect with me, taylornorrisreiki.com. You can sign up for the Reiki Share for free. Learn more about the upcoming class, Co-Creating Heaven on Earth on April 20th, as well as the Reiki trainings I'm teaching in March and April and the variety of astrology readings I offer, as well as the Reiki sessions I offer. So thank you so much for being here. I wish you a very blessed and beautiful shamanic journey this Pisces new moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.